Welcome back to the Jen and Thomas podcast. I am your host, Thomas, and with us today, we have a very special guest. First time on the show, Brendan Churchill. How are you, buddy? Good. Thanks for having me. All right. Welcome to the show. Yeah. And yeah. as you uh, longtime listeners know, we start every podcast with reviewing a drink. And today we are reviewing, hey, it's in the name, a gin and tonic. Uh, I'm going to be honest, my first gin and tonic. Really? I've never really had a gin and tonic. Brandon? I'm not lying. You are in for a treat. I've I've had gin and other things. I've never had like an actual gin and tonic. Mm. Well, you it, know, it, it depends. I... It depends what you call a tonic though. Tonic water. Okay, well, this is my first gin and tonic then. Well, there we go. And you know, I may or may not be uh, known for my gin and tonics. You know, back uh, back in my you early. You should be because the name of the show. Well, yes, but back in the early days of me, like, oh, freshly twenty-one, we're making drinks, right? I'd have them over. I'd have everyone over at my house, and I'd be like, "All right, guys, get ready for a TG's G and T, a Thomas Gordon's gin and tonic." Oh my god! That's and then, perfect. yeah, but then once you're a few drinks deep, you know, your friend walks up like, "Tom, can I get a TG's T and G? Can I get TG T G G G?" Yeah, pretty much. So, I'm glad that we can bless you with your first uh, TG's G and T. Here's to you. So, first impressions. It's very good. It's very floral. Yes. Well, I think that might be a part of our gin. This is uh, Citadel Gin de France. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to read the rest that's on here. Well, it's an infusion of fruits and aromatics, so that might be why it's a little more floral. Shout out to Danielle. For the, yeah, uh, shout out to Danielle gin. for supplying the supplies. Uh, but yeah, no, this is a very good gin. I probably should have gotten a higher quality tonic. We're just using Canada Dry, which is a staple. Fine. It's, you know, but this is a high quality gin. I really like it. It's very floral. Um, I think she got it for the bottle, honestly. It's, an, it's a beautiful bottle. She's a, it's she's a, a very light blue person. And she got it for the pretty bottle. And normally I like my gins from London. Not, yeah, London. This is France. So I think this is my first time with a French gin. Well, you've, we've talked about Peaky Blinders, right? Yes. Well, the, the gin, gin is part of the uh, show. Uh, uh, I stopped watching it. I stopped watching in the middle of like season two just because of whatever. And then I could not get back into it because I had no idea what was going on. Cause yeah, there's no previously no, on, there's, there's no, no, there's no recaps and they just kind of go with it. They're not like, Hey Tommy, do you remember last week when you killed that guy and now we're dealing with the consequences? Yeah. They just go forward. They do it, uh, for each season. They'll have a little recap at the beginning of the next season, but that's about it. I might just start over. You should. Yeah, it's a good show. I've watched it a couple times. And I said this uh, on an earlier episode, one of our like quasi-test episodes, uh, but now for Danielle in the room, I'll tell her, that is, uh, I really, really tried to rock the Peaky Blinders haircut. Right. It was not good. But anyway, so about these gin and tonics, I just want to throw something at you. Tonic water was like kind of invented to be like a cure deterrent for malaria. Because it comes from like quinine or quinine or something, oh. and that comes from like a tree bark in Africa because everyone's getting malaria. Okay. And then back then, everyone was just drinking all day, so that's how the gin and tonic kind of came to be. I should have done a little more research, but I, I'll buy it. The humble origins. I, listen, you don't have to tell me yeah. a reason to drink. Yeah, and then uh, I'm carrying malaria right now. You know what is so funny is there was a time where I thought it would be really funny if I got malaria no. and then, like, lived, but then no. just be like, I had malaria for a summer. No. But that was before I knew how bad it was. God, no. Don't do that. Well, I, I didn't. Thank God. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I don't really know where mosquitoes hang out, um, <laughs> let alone the malaria-filled ones. But you know what's actually kind of sad, though, dude, is I found out that the mosquitoes that are sucking your blood... Those yeah. are the females, right? The vampires? Yeah. Okay. But they're, like, only doing that to, like, feed their little babies. Like, yeah. normally they don't do it. So, like, you're yeah. killing a mother. Okay. You know? It's like, imagine, like, getting shot for trying to provide for your family, man. Fuck mosquitoes, bro. So that is why I'm launching a new campaign, hashtag save all mosquitoes. Mosquito I'm, lives matter. I'm launching a new campaign called kill all the mosquitoes. I like that one better. Fuck the mosquitoes. I don't like them. We all know a certain somebody whose backyard is the most absurd, like, breeding ground for mosquitoes. Oh, yeah. 
Make sure you don't have standing water. And mow your yard. Uh, The mowing the yard might be it because I have searched that entire property for standing water. I cannot. I think it's her neighbors. Also, but you can spray your yard. Yeah. Well, they're not going to do that. No, they won't. But you can is the thing. It is hot in here. It is hot. Thank you. Uh. We had to we have we had to turn on a fan. I'm over here sweating. I just get excited. I get excited when I'm on playing pretend radio. I'm gonna be honest. I don't I don't feel hot at all. But that's because I've been acclimated to this this room today. That's because you're hot, Brandon. Thank you. I, I, the room has acclimated. acclimated Does to a me. furnace know it's on fire? I don't know. No, I don't. You know what I mean, does ice know it's cold? No, I don't. <laughs> But anyway, Brandon, it's uh, it's been a week about, right? Have we? Yeah, that crisp clink of the glass. I know this is good. Oh, these, so... crisp, these crystal glasses. Go ahead, shout out the crystal glasses. Sh- shout out! I think this is my first time drinking out of a crystal glass. I'm a, uh, I have a lot of those like little colored plastic cups from Target. Drink everything out of those. So you know when like your grandparents downsize or like your parents move out or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, wait, they my parents move out. Uh, I'm, your parents like. Always are trying to get rid of shit. Oh yeah, I was like, "Is my dad like, all right, son? Here are the keys. You're the man of the house now." I want to say moving into a studio. I want to say I got these when my grandparents moved to like nursing homes and stuff. You know? Yeah. And they had sold their house and everything. They were giving away all their stuff. Uh, I uh... these crystal glasses, uh, I believe, are from my grandparents. They're really, really nice. They are very nice, they're and they're very way too nice for me. They are very grandma. Um, my parents actually have a version of these that have a stem on them, like a wine glass almost, but it's, it's the same glass with a stem and a base. If we ever do a wine episode, I have a bottle of wine for us. I have glasses. Perfect. I just, it's, it's just one I've been holding on to. So I, we, I need to find a reason to drink it and I'm not going to drink a bottle of red by myself. I'll give you a reason to drink it. Well, there we go. Next, but what I was gonna next say, week on next week on the Gin and Thomas, Gin and podcast. Thomas podcast. But what I was podcast, gonna say, podcast, podcast. Um, you mentioned gin just like a, well, I mean you're over here talking about how crisp it is, and that's what I like about this gin specifically is it is crisp, it's floral. light, it's floral, but isn't it made from flowers? Well, this says it's like infused with um, flowers and arom- or fruits and aromatics, but I mean there's a lot of like botanicals. That are generally infused in all these things. Mm. I don't know so much about like a flower specifically, but this is definitely a very floral gin. Yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I'm here for it though; it's good. Yeah, I really, really like floral things. But what I like about this is there are certain other um, gins that they're so crisp; it's almost like a pine needle taste, mm. mm-hmm. which I really like. But this is a great foray. This is a great, nice. This is a Cheers nice. Cheers to uh, you. <laughs> yeah, and I and I'm drinking light today. So, it's good. It's just, it's light. It's refreshing. This is a great summer gin. Um, I've, I've said this before, especially on my uh, my YouTube videos. Brandon Churchill on YouTube. Um, I will say it again. I really, really hated gin initially. I've loved it for as long as I can remember. Uh, obviously, it was a cheap gin because I was poor. <laughs> Yeah. Young and young. Well, and like poor. coming out of the plastic bottle cheap? Yes, young and poor. So I I bought it I bought you know what I bought it for? Is I bought it to make Long Islands. Mm-hmm. So you, you gotta have a gin, you know. Or like I we were we were we were experimenting with mixed drinks. I don't even know if I know everything that goes into a Long Island. Everything. Everything goes into a Long okay. Island. Okay. But so I had a whole fifth of gin. And I was like, I don't know how to get rid of this. Because, you know, you know, when you're young, you, like, drink all of whatever you have. And you don't buy more till you run out. This is making me think of the beginning of a horror movie when, like, the family's all nice and happy. You're like, yeah, we, you know, we were sipping Long Island iced teas. Oh and you're like, God. and then I was just left with a fifth of cheap gin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to see uh, how yeah. this ends horrifically. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um so I, I tried a few sodas 
to try to. I was like, ah, nothing. Like just, mixing like gin with Sprite kind of thing. Yeah, I was like, no, nothing works. You know what works? No, I, I don't. I don't agree. I like. I mean, I I don't like doing gin and soda either. So I do agree. Sorry. But you know what ended up working? Gin and lemonade. Mountain Dew, pitch black. That's the grapefruit one. Grapefruit. I know. Good. I talked about this on the Mountain yeah. Dew episode, but the grapefruit Mountain Dew, like mixed perfectly, didn't even taste the gin at all. I I really really like grapefruit um, in my alcoholic drinks. Like, squirt. That's my favorite soda. Oh squirt. my god! Do I have a story for you about squirt? That's my the, my aunt had squirt. That's the only person I ever knew who had squirt was my aunt. It's my favorite, and that's a grapefruit soda. But so I, I got to talk about this, and then I'll tell my grape my squirt story. Well, <laughs> talking about you, squirt. Really, isn't it someone else's squirt story? <laughs> but um, is it your story to tell? It is my story, but you know what? We'll get there when we get we'll there. We'll talk about your squirting here in a minute. Yeah. But I, if I could, I would replace like almost every lime in drinks with grapefruit. Why? I just love it. I love fans of your YouTube channel. I say it in every video. I'm like, I like the bitter. I like the bitter stuff. Oh, you are a bitter guy. Yeah. <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bitter old man. Yeah, but I really like it, and I don't know where I heard this, and it cannot be true, and I never Googled it. But when I was, like, freshly 21, someone was like, oh, yeah, if you, like, mix grapefruit with your drinks, like, you get, like, more drunk faster or something like that. And I was just that like— That sounds like some witchcraft bullshit. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how, like, compounds work. I'm not a physiologist or whatever. Chemist. I mean, but it's like in my body and my liver, biologist. liver, liver metastasis. No, that's whatever. I don't know how it works. Biologist. I'm not a biologist. I'm a plant biologist. You're a arborist. Yes, a tree, a <laughs> surgical dendrologist. Um, but so since then, I was like, yeah, dude, getting loaded, putting grapefruit in all my drinks, and that's how I got used to it, and that's like what started me loving bitter drinks. You're a big cranberry guy, aren't you? Oh, dude. <laughs> I wish I lived in a box so I could grow my own cranberries. When I get into making mead, now that like I have a place for Listen, it and like huh? We're going to we're going to make a mead. We're going to make a mead and I have like all of my ideas for seasonal meads and from a fall I want to do like a spiced orange yes. and cranberry yes. mead. Yes. Yes. For summer, I want to do a yuzu peach. Okay. Ooh, that might be a spring. No, that's a summer. That's a I, summer. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I mean, you got me. And I think for spring, I might do a floral. Okay. Maybe with some juniper. Juniper. You know what's actually, this is an idea that we could maybe make a video about is once we start making some meads and stuff, you need yeast. There is actually a way to like make your own yeast with uh, juniper berries because juniper berries, they're like w blue, but they're like powdery blue. And that powder on the outside is actually yeast. And you can just like make yeast off of that you know what really? i mean so it's like that can be like the local flavor it's like this is the touch of st louis in my mead that's pretty st louis wild yeast that's dope yeah should definitely do that yeah i'm in i'm in too i, I just gotta buy the equipment it's really cheap i mean compared to all this oh, listen you're listening to it right now this shit ain't cheap it is not uh, that's why we sound so good i had to uh i had to take out a second mortgage well, actually, I asked, like, everybody I knew for the money to buy all this equipment, mm -hmm. and everyone told me no, so I just bought it myself. And, uh, yeah, it's fine. I, I could easily afford it. I just tried to get everyone else to pay for it. It's it's not cheap by any means. And not, not to disclose too much, but you don't really have the money necessarily for it. I mean, you – Well, I, I, I physically – I bought it, didn't you, you I? You physically had the money. Like, it's just – I wouldn't recommend – the average person to go out and no well and the thing is is like i'm one of these people that like dude if i'm gonna get into this i can i gotta do it right like when i got oh, into yeah, origami yeah, yeah. i bought like four thousand pages of the highest quality paper imaginable and all i'm doing is folding birds well that's dumb well but... and like and then <laughs> like at a certain point i was like <laughs> it's more fun to do origami with not origami paper like i have like i have like 50 cranes made from my old chemistry notes you know oh, what I mean? Kind of cool. Actually. And like my friend works at a restaurant, and like those little like little meal tickets that they write on, I like made a bunch out of those, and that's way more fun. So I have all this like insanely high quality paper that I don't even touch. I would say the origami uh, would be, you know, if you made it out of something nostalgic, like mm -hmm. like your chemistry notes or like a note from a loved one or something. Ooh, that would be really good. Yeah. I have my little like ex girlfriend box. Don't do that. 
Well, I mean, I don't know. Make it into I'm not going to read Krista's cards ever again, so it'd make, be kind of cool to make it out of those. Make it into a middle finger or something. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be good. <gasps> or I can make an origami box to put something. all the other stuff. <laughs> I don't... I don't think any of them uh, align it with that ideology. But well, we could pretend. I'll get like sued for slander. Screw them. We could pretend. But um, oh, sorry. The, the, the squirt story. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like. I can't forget because it's so <laughs> funny. Yeah, please get to the squirts. So, are you familiar with the Colorado River? What do you mean? Am I familiar with it? Do you acknowledge that it? it exists? Have I heard of it? Yes. Okay. So I was on my way to the Colorado River. Okay. Is that the one that runs through the Grand Canyon? No. Maybe. No. I don't think so. It goes, uh, it, it's the, like the border between Arizona and California. It's the river through the Grand Canyon. I thought that was Hold Colorado. on. Can we get our producer to look that up? Emily? Emily. Emily. Drunk B. Uh, would like to know. So, well, while she's typing slower than anyone I've ever seen my in my life. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> the, so, the river that goes through the Grand Canyon. What is the river that goes through the Grand Canyon? No, just what no, is we, the river that goes? We already the know the Colorado Canyon. River. We know the, col the Colorado, the Colorado goes through the Hoover Dam. Oh, oh my God, the Hoover Dam. That is still. Huh? Oh it shit! Is. All right, never Fucking mind. I told it's a big you, river. Bro. Fucking told you, bro. Dude, the Colorado River, or I mean, the Hoover Dam is still not done setting. Yeah, it's I'm, crazy. Yeah, I remember you saying that. I feel. Did I say this already? I, it's one of your fun facts. If I've already said this like one episode not, ago, not I'm the, sorry. No, 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 oh, okay. no, no, not in the episodes, no. But so, <clears throat> so I was in I was in Scottsdale, Arizona, and me and this girl were driving up because we were going to go kayaking in the Colorado River, and we had to stop in Kingman, Arizona. And would you do another one of those, big guy? I could do another one. All right, let me. Uh, I'll work through mine too. Um, it may. I have to ask Danielle if we could use her gin again. I mean, she she hasn't touched that gin since she bought it, really. Yeah, I think sure I've drank fine. more of that gin than she has. Yeah. Um, well, we'll wait for her to come back wherever she is. But so anyway, we we're going up through, you know, and Kingman, Arizona is like not to talk badly about anyone that lives there. But why do you live there? Yeah, I guess no it's sense. close to the river, but there's nothing like really there. And then it's somewhat close to Vegas, but there's no industry. Maybe it was a railroad town. I don't know. Okay. But everything there is like stuck in the '70s. Like you go into oh, that's so cool. Like I think well, like okay, as in maybe not to you, but like I no, think it's it like so nothing has been replaced. So everything's oh, just like falling apart. Yeah. And so I don't know if it was a Fry's or a Bashes or wherever we went. I think it was a Bashes. Explain what that is. That's the that's like the grocery store. Okay, the the Basha family in Arizona. No they they own Food City, Bashes, and AJ's. That's where I get the iced tea. Danielle knows all about that. She could speak to that when she gets back. Yeah, but no, it's all very good. So anyway, they they just own all these grocery stores. And so I was in there, and we we're just like getting some drinks and all that, or like beverages and snacks. So I was like in line at the thing mm -hmm. and I was, and, um, <clears throat> sorry, sorry. No, you're good. And so I, I was at the, like the checkout line. I look behind me and there's like the refrigerator with the sodas. And so I, I was like, oh man, like squirts my favorite soda and not to like kiss and tell, but okay. the girl I was with oh, okay. did that, you know, did what, what do you mean? You know what I mean, Brandon. Kiss and, kiss and tell? Oh. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm like grabbing squirt for a reason. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. And so then I was like, man, I love a squirt. My favorite thing to drink any time of day. Can't get enough of it. And she was like. And she was like, oh, my God, stop. Oh, my whatever. And then this sweet little old lady at the checkout line is like, oh, yeah, I love it, too. Nothing beats a squirt. And I'm like. You hear that, so and so? Love. Nothing beats a squirt. Love to squirt. Yeah. Monday morning to Friday afternoon, squirting yeah. all the time. Well, no, yeah, like, no, what? exactly. And so then after that, she was like, "That was not funny, Thomas." Um, then why am I laughing? You know what I'm saying? It's not funny. Nobody's laughing. Yeah, no. So it was just, yeah. So that's like my squirt story, but it's just funny. I think that's my squirt. Story. I could have gotten a lot more like graphic, but I don't want to like. No, no, that was like the perfect like. That's <laughs> yeah. my squirt story. That's my squirt story. I love it. Yeah, no, it's just some sweet little old lady being like, "Oh yeah, I love it." I love oh my it. god! And then I kayaked at the Colorado River, put on that, sunblock, that it runs through the Grand, it runs through the Grand Canyon, 
and it was really really cool we like went the up hoover dam. yeah well we went up to the hoover dam came back down whatever we went to this thing called like emerald cove or emerald cave or something mm. and um i put on sunblock but we left the sunblock like in the car right as one does yeah but like we were out there for so long i guess it just washed off but like i ended up getting like terrible burns on my legs from the sun always always summer. and like my legs are like scarred now from it like they were really? like yeah it was insane and um when i was on my way home like i had that thing like if you get burned really bad like whether it be sunburn or like actually burned you like get the chills and all that oh yeah and so i was just like racing home and I, i'm not gonna lie to you i was going like 100 miles an hour and then this cop pulls me over <laughs> and then he's like do you know how fast you're going i'm like uh no officer no, no idea. idea but i'm over here i'm like i'm flooring this mf or dude but so this cop is like giving me a really really hard time, and I understand I was speeding. But like you know, like when you're the only one on a straight road, it's, it's like eat like, my ass. Like yeah, but it's also just like you kind of don't even realize you start speeding. Yeah, you can't pace yourself. Yeah, and so um, the guy was like there, and it was like right when like COVID was kind of starting. He's like, oh, you know, I could I could take you to jail, but you know, and then you're like. <sighs> Well, they were just kind of like, yeah, you know, with uh, COVID numbers up, we're trying not to put in too many people in this jail so you know, but, you know, I could easily lock you up. And I'm like, oh, geez, officer, uh, I sure oh, hope geez, not. Rick. Yeah. But then the girl I was with is like, hates cops, I guess. So she's like talking mad shit. I'm like, bitch, you're not the one going to jail. Yeah, oh my God. I Can you please you stop? This. Like, if you know, if he asks me to get out of the car, I'm done. And so I'm just like, oh, yeah, let me. Let, sh sure thing, officer, because he got me. Like, I was speeding. Clearly, yeah. And so, like, I couldn't be like, man, this motherfucker, you know? And so, um... <clears throat> it's because I'm white, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like, what? Well, no, and so I I talk him off the ledge of taking me to jail. That's funny. And he only gives me a ticket for going 80, That's which funny. is, like, a, below the criminal speeds. So. Right, like, like less than 20 over. Yeah. But, like, I mean, like, in Arizona, if you go over 80 at all, it's, like, criminal speeds. But I was going, like, 100, so that's... Oh, okay. Whatever the next level. I don't know if there's felony speeds, Felony, but yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I was in my mom's car, too, so. Uh, the jingle of ice in a glass. I know. I know, and you went for the Bud Light, so you can't be jingling. Okay, listen. Oh, we, we also have to mark. Uh, it, 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 we, we've opened up Brandon's second drink. We wanted to make sure that Daniel's, Daniel was okay with us drinking more of her gin. She doesn't mind. So. All right, that'll be my I, second drink then. I and that's will what we allow like to... you to pour me another drink. Oh, all right. And that's what we do on this podcast. You know, we like to have two drinks, you know, because there's a quote by somebody. I forget. Drink the first, sip the second, skip the third. Except we don't listen to that last part around here, if you know what I'm saying. No shit. We don't skip the third drink. Are you out of your mind? The third drink is the fun drink. The third drink is the drink that starts the party, if I'm The third honest. drink is what? gets you into fights why don't you pour this drink and i will tell you about the third drink you all right i might need some more ice let's but you call tell this me. section the third drink oh yeah sip your drink there emily and by the third drink i mean the fun part okay yeah that's what we like your your first drink is like is like breaking the seal you're cracking open the bottle and what <laughs> I, I, I just no, didn't know. I got you're, confused. You're fine. You're fine. Need yeah, we have a couple of guests in the studio we today. Do, we do have some fans playing around in the room. Yeah, you know, much like Mr. Beast, we picked two random subscribers to join us today. <laughs> yeah, nobody subscribed to this, po this podcast oh yet because God. it's not... Oh, I know, I need to make... Oh, my beast. God. So, I've had this... Oh, wait, no. You tell me about the drink. And I'll I'm going to tell you about drink. the third drink. Okay, so the first drink is the cracking the bottle. You're breaking the seal. You're starting the night, okay? That's like the shower beer, if you will. That's that's the start, okay? The yeah, shower your, beer. Your second one is chasing that first one. It's the... Okay, we kind of have an idea of what we're doing tonight. We're making the plans, I'm going to make sure I can kind of maintain this this buzz or, like, where this buzz is going to end up. By the end of mm -hmm. it, you definitely should have a buzz. The third drink is, oh, we're fucking doing this. This is this is what's happening tonight. We have the, the plans are set. The people are here. The third drink is the party. Well, to be fair to the so quote, don't, don't I think it's more of, like, when you're trying to be civilized. Okay, so I'm going to give you some tips. 
You ready for this? Okay. And this is for like when you're drinking with like your boss or or like your your work or whatever. It's uh match your boss but be like one drink behind. That's exactly what I do. So I'm always one behind cuz you never know if they're counting you. Right. Always make sure you're like one drink behind your boss. But definitely like try to match them if you can. If you're a lightweight, just don't ignore that completely. Just like I don't drink. Just just, just tell me you don't drink or something. Or like have a drink. But like if if you're a normal person like I am, match your boss and then like try to say like one behind. Well, I in general and like so if I'm like hanging out with like you I mean, if we're going out, it doesn't matter. Right. But um, if I'm, like, with, like, someone kind of on my level and we're going out, I try to, like, match them drink for drink. Like, right. I never go ahead of them. But, like, yeah. I drink things really fast. Same. So I end up just kind of, like, waiting for them. But I yeah. never, like, order ahead. Yeah. And, you know, and that just – that keeps you out of trouble. We we did <laughs> – yeah, it can. Yeah, definitely. We did do some car bombs this uh, yesterday. It was a good time. Oh my god, did you just spray the recorder? I just a little bit. I just got <laughs> lime juice out all over everything I have. If that if that recorder doesn't smell like lime juice and gin by the time <laughs> it's not if right. This thing yeah, if this thing just doesn't reek of stale day old alcohol, then we're not doing this podcast right. It's called the Gin and Thomas podcast for a reason. Yes it is, but um <clears throat> Sorry about that. Well, yeah, I'm hacking up, dude. I've, I've have just the been, cough button. I have I have a cough button. Yeah, it's I don't have moving, a soundboard. It's you moving your arm. From oh yeah, <laughs> your mic. <laughs> let's let's pretend this is bigger than it is. Yeah, I uh, so I don't I don't have any like I don't have any known allergies to anything, but so I don't get like seasonal allergies or anything like that. Well, that's nice. But like at my job, dude, I have been breathing in so much dust lately like i just had this lingering cough that i cannot get rid of it's like when i had the rona i've had it twice i had it once i had it twice and um it's about the same both times i didn't die obviously but like it wasn't good my friend got covid twice before he was vaccinated and then his wife was like maybe you should just get vaccinated because you're obviously catching this thing all the time right so he got it, oh, here. got COVID again, oh. and then he got the booster and got COVID again. Like, oh, I don't know how that working. keeps – I got it once, and that was it. And I'm like, you know, what – like, are you hanging – are you shaking hands with, like, the virus itself? Playing grab ass in the ICU? Like, what are we doing here, Matt? <laughs> His name would be Matt. We have another guest in the studio today, little Oliver coming in. How are you, little guy? His name is Oliver. He's a fluffy boy. Come here. And he's one of those orange cats, so you know he's getting up to something. But no, we just had our uh, our food delivery, and he's over here investigating. He's a, he's a good boy. He's a, oh my he's a mean. He's a mean cat. He's honestly. a meme. Speaking of meme cats, um, there is a cat in my life. Not my cat, but this cat's name is S'more. Okay. Just an absolute unit, a whale of a cat. I know the type. And like, I'm like, he's taking steps, and it genuinely almost feels like it's shaking the floor. But he, like, if hold you on, have a cup on. of Let's water, see if we can get him to meow. I saw him do it. Yeah, just a. Yeah, you 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 heard him. You heard him sniffing. That's about it. That's yeah. all you get. And so... Um, you don't get to hear his little chirps. Yeah. And so this cat, he, like, if you have, like, a glass of water, he, like, dips his little paw in and then, oh, like, slurps it up. But one time I was cat sitting, and I was making myself vodka water. My favorite thing to drink is just, like, vodka, water, lemon, lime. You know what I mean? Like, zero, oh, almost zero calories, whatever, and it's easy. And, like, way more water than vodka, so it's almost like... It's the LaCroix of alcohol. Well, I told you whispers of vodka. I told you uh, what I was drinking last weekend was the um, tequila club soda lime juice. Yeah, that would be good. It was very good, and in my opinion, 
pretty healthy as far as drinks go. Relatively. As for as far as drinks go, that's right. Yeah. Low and, sugar, uh low calorie, pretty pretty decent. Like just literally just like fuck you up in a bottle. Yeah. I'm a mezcal kind of guy now. That's dirty. But that's well that's more of like a like I'm mad at Mexico for their designation of origin for how they messed up the tequila. It's a whole, you know, guys, it's a whole thing. Oh, Maybe you, we can do an episode one, and I'll tell you the whole history you about You were the it. one who told me they put like a location tag on the... Yeah, it has to be like from Hualisco. It has to be made from Blue Agave. It has to be like all of these certain things. Is that, that like, what it's called? Is a location tag? What is it called? It's like a designation of origin. Origin tag. Yeah, something. And that's what that's what's, what has champagne. So it has to be made like yes. in Champagne, France with champagne, like yeast, champagne, champagne grapes. Yes. There's like one place in California that's Yeah. And so to. if you do if you change any of those one things, it's no longer champagne, it's a sparkling wine. And so if you change right. any one thing about how like tequila is made, it's suddenly a mezcal. Which isn't like there's there's at this point now you there's a good mezcals, but like tequila itself like before the whole I always knew that like like tequila was supposed to be agave like 100% agave right blue agave it has to be blue okay so it ha- like it's one specific blue agave and that's why like okay. and so all of these plantations they only have like blue agave fields and <clears throat> and what they do is they like propagate it and they get like a, a blue agave like the size mm-hmm. of your thumbnail mm-hmm. plant those and it takes like eight years for them to get to the size to right, harvest to maturity yeah but the problem with like with monocultures and you growing up in uh, a bunch of cornfields if like one thing that attacks corn hits it it's all gone yeah it's all done and so like one like pest or fungus or whatever can completely decimate a field and that can like ruin someone's like entire life because then they're just out of money and they can't like produce anything for right, like eight that's years. That's all they do. But um, but my previous story, Brandon, I was I was house sitting for this giant cat, and I had like my little vodka water thing, and I passed out on the couch watching the Bob's Burgers movie. I wake up to this cat going ham on my vodka water. He's dipping his little paw in there and sipping it, and he like would not stop. Like, I don't know. It, I must have, like, diluted it just enough because it's, yeah, it's S'more, Danielle. Do you know S'more? Yeah. He's guy. over there. But I mean, you know, I mean, An I don't alcoholic. know if he drank, like, a okay. drop at alcoholic a time. Alcoholic cat. But this guy was going nuts. I just, like, woke up because I fell asleep, and he's just like. <laughs> I'm like, this guy, dude. My kind of cat, bro. Big old drunk-ass cat. And we all have a friend whose dog loves, like, beer and seltzers and all well, that. listen, Oliver loves to sip a little bit of beer every now and then. He likes to lick off the rim. It... <laughs> of the beer. I think a lot of people like to lick off the rim. I don't know what you're talking about. You're missing out. <laughs> oh. Okay. You either lick off the rim or you're a coward. Salt and lime. Salt and lime. <laughs> <laughs> Salt and lime. Oh my gosh. Oh, do people put sugar on the rim glasses for like margaritas ever? Uh, yes, for like the uh, fruits, like the sweeter fruits. Yeah, like so a mango. I was out at a bar with a girl. Who was it? I don't even remember. It might have been the girl that broke up with me after my car accident. That's fine. Let's not dox her. Well, no, but I'm just trying to think. I'm, well, yeah, I'm not going to dox her, but I'm just trying to figure out who it was. And I think shout it's the girl. Shout out to the first of us. Yeah, shout out to the. F- That's a lot of lime, Danielle. Oh, my God. It's okay. It's fine. Enjoy. You're you're uh, you're not getting scurvy. We if know that. If you don't like it, I'll chug it in the last five um, minutes of the five o'clock. But, so anyway, this girl who broke up with me because I was in a car accident, but before my car accident, no, 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 no. It was the girl that I was kind of seeing when the Suns were in the NBA Finals. But it was like the entire playoffs. Like, you you, you know, you guys know it's the Suns and Four era. And we only ever hung out to watch the Suns. And that's just like what we did. I'm sorry, that's just funny. Like, we kissed, like, once, but we were, like, going out however long the playoffs were. And she was like, oh, I'll have, like, a margarita with, like, sugar on the rim. And I was like, who the fuck 
God damn. I didn't know that was a thing. That's a thing. Well, now I feel bad for judging her. But you guys, hey, uh, you know, if you guys watch the Brandon Churchill's YouTube channel, you guys know I don't like the sweets. It was alien to me. It's it was true. foreign. He's a bitter person. I am. <laughs> but no, uh, but yeah, no, that was just a whole thing. Hold on. Did we get pizza and wings? Oh my God. Remy's so fat. The Jen and Thomas podcast eats well on football Sundays. You damn right. You damn right. Oh, by the way, this is the last Sunday that I'm obligate. Op oh my God. Here, here is my voice. Last Sunday, I'm obligated to stop drinking at five o'clock. Uh, what about next Sunday? That's still gonna be in Mexico, baby. Oh, all right. I am. I'm drinking Friday morning to Wednesday when I get home. I drunk the whole time. Calories don't count when you're on vacation, right? That's right. Bro, that's my mantra when I'm in Pittsburgh. I don't know what it is about being in Pittsburgh, but that city does something to me. Well, I just, I can drink. It's so and, rusty that you gotta... <laughs> yeah, I can just drink and eat like nobody's business, dude. Like, it's insane. It's like being in Philly and you're like, Philly cheesesteaks. Well, yeah, but the food's better. And Permanti, bro, shout out to Permanti Bros. Shout out to Hoolies, that fish market. Shout out to, uh, I don't know, everywhere's good. Oh, I went to this Never one been. ramen place. I cannot remember the name, but it was so good. I think it has yuzu in the name, but it was so good. I love it. I love Pittsburgh, dude. We got to go. I'll, I'll go. I'll see go to the Pittsburgh. Steelers. See the Bears play the Steelers sometime. I got a friend in Detroit. We should go to Detroit sometime. I don't want to die. Well, well. Not, no, Detroit's no, on its he, way up. He's he's in the suburbs. In Romulus. I mean, you know, that's where all the auto manufacturers are still at. So. Are they still there? Oh yeah. There's tons. I thought they all closed down. No. I don't. I don't pay attention. So I mean, a lot of them like ship their shit overseas and mm -hmm. different countries, but like, there's still plenty there. A lot of them, actually, I think a lot of them now. Are foreign. All the foreign auto manufacturers are in Detroit. That's interesting. I I've, I've only been once, and I just I landed in like the middle of the night, and then my friend picked me up, and we went to Toledo. Well, he works for Nissan, so I, oh, know, well, I know Nissan's there for sure. And oh. um, I don't know if you know Rivian. Yeah, I've recently learned of their existence. They make the cars in Bloomington, Norrell, Illinois. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm from. Uh, Dox myself, um, <laughs> and then uh, they actually did. They design all their stuff in Detroit. So there's that. I've never owned a new car. Really? Yeah. No. I've every car I've ever owned. So my first car, 2003 Chevy Malibu. That was my mom's. And then I had a 2003, 2006 red convertible. Mini Cooper. Oh my gosh, the girls loved that car. I wish I was better at talking to women. But that car was oh. so great. It felt like I was in a spaceship the way it would like light up on the inside. And then after that, I had a like a 1999 Ford Focus with 200,000 miles on it. And then after that, I had a 2006 Kia Sorento. And now I'm rocking my little truck, a 93 Nissan. I think we should wrap this up because uh, it's. I think it's food time. <laughs> yeah, we got like 20 minutes left, but we can we can do a short one. That's too much. Oh, do we? Mm-hmm. We could do two. So we could eat and then we can come back and do another one. Well, let's do that. We'll put them together. Well, unfortunately, Brandon, this is it. I mean, you're only my special guest for today, so I'll, I mean, I can work on getting you back on the show, but no, I meant like, well, this will still be the same episode. Oh, just, just pause it. Yeah, we'll pause it. We we'll probably eat, figure that out um, and put them in the same. Put them together. I've heard of this thing called editing. We can give it a try. Oh, we might have to. We'll just stitch them together. All right, uh, we will be back. And um, this is me. At five o'clock on Sunday, October last. It's five o'clock. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh oh. So I'm done drinking. Done drinking. Here we go. Um, pause it. 
And welcome back. We are full and focused, coming at you live at the time. Stay tuned for 20 minutes of easy podcast listening. And we still have Brandon here in the studio with us. It's good to be here. I, I'm so happy to be a special guest on this podcast. I know I know you have a busy schedule. You have a lot going on. You're out um, building robots and guest starring on a litany of other podcasts. But I'm glad you were able to squeeze us in. And uh, dissecting pig eyes also. Is that, that what that is? That's what it was. I've dissected a pig before. A little fetal pig. That's what Danielle said. She also did that. Danielle said that I did that? No, no, that she did that. Um, I got to stand up. My knees are killing me. Well, stop my being, God. Get off your knees. That's, I, I'm trying. No, it's okay. I, I, I know this podcast is very one sided. You can get off your knees now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, once we get a video element going on, hopefully we'll have some chairs. But I just do these like weird like kneeling poses. You're a very <laughs> yoga esque. Yeah, I don't podcaster. just sit. But I like to, you know, I like to have the, the, I like to be able to get up and move. That's why I told Emily she could have the chair because I know you're gonna be. I'm not gonna sit down. Walking around, standing, kneeling, whatever it is that you do during these podcasts. Yeah, I'm just out here chilling, bro. Yeah, you're chilling. Last, um, Watch this. last guest I had on the podcast just was laid up on the couch like just like that. Oh, I've never seen him, ladies and gentlemen. I've never seen a man more relaxed. I'm pretty relaxed. But we were supposed to have a. Uh, you know, a, a a spicy hot topic fresh out of the oven, but well, a we certain had some somebody spicy hot wings instead. We did have some spicy hot wings. Oh my god! Let me tell you, wing guys, stop. wing stop wings. They're doing it for me. Some free advertising, please sponsor us. I'm down for that. I love wing stop. Wing stop's fire. The wing stop that I'm like ninety percent sure we got this from. Like I'm ninety percent sure it's the same wing stop that my friend was almost shot at. Oh. He, like, got into an argument with one of the guys making wings. Why? And the guy making wings pulled out a gun. What? It's St. Louis, Brandon. I don't know what goes on here. Okay, I know it's St. Louis, but, like, that's still very odd for even here. I don't know, man. I just eat the wings. (laughs) But, I mean... Listen, listen. I just eat the wings. I I don't care how they get made. And, uh... I ain't one of you. Well, and this is this is one of my favorite quotes. Random events pull others behind them like links on a chain, right? It's like where you start your day and where you end your day, you never know what happens in between, right? I think you say that too much. I do say it too much, but it's the words I live by. Oh. I'll stop saying it. Well, you can stop now, but like now it's on the podcast. Well, so now like, it's on the podcast. It's so the first time it's on the podcast. There. Yeah. So, so I know. say it a lot. Now they know. But it's like who like goes to work? goes home and like you know what dude i think i could go for some wings and you almost get shot you know what i mean it's like it's pretty fucked up like there's there's never a situation so bad it can't get worse and there because the reason he got into the fight is he's like hey man like i called in my order like an hour ago and like you know i've been sitting here mm-hmm. waiting here and mm-hmm. the guy pulls out a gun it's like mm-hmm. you know it's like it's like you thought the peak or, the, or not the peak but like the, the lowest point of your day was you had to wait an hour for wings right and then you get a, get a gun pulled on you you know there's no situation that can't be made worse, and there's always a little bit more innocence left to lose. Yeah, you're not rock bottom till you're rock bottom. But then there's always there's always something more though. No, I mean, you can be like rock bottom though. I mean, you can be rock bottom and stub your toe. You know what I'm saying? It just there's always a way. Uh, yeah, you never know. It's a scary way to know. live. Never know where rock bottom is exactly. Yeah, but anyway, so we got our wings here. Oh, that's that's full, why we're full and focused. Full and we focused. got some Emo's pizza. Delicious. We got our toasted raviolis. Oh my god! Don't even talk to me. I'm so full. Good. I got a belly here. Been having belly. Here, bro. You can hear me slap that thing. What? <laughs> uh, was that yours or mine? Because that's mine. Uh-huh. Oh, I just peeked my way for him. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> We'll have to clip that. But anyway. <laughs> nah, we ain't clipping shit. No cuts. No cuts here on the Jen and Thomas podcast. I'm going to cut everything you've said out this entire episode. I recommend it. But anyway, so we were supposed to have a really good topic. We were on a nice little uh, Snapchat FaceTime call with one of our friends. And sh- we were like, all right, give us a topic. And she's like, oh, I can't. You know, my phone's going to die. I have to get off Snapchat. And we're like, okay, just text it to us. She's like, okay, bye. I, I'm did, still waiting for it. Did we get it? No, we didn't get. How about one of you two give us a, a topic? Not that we need one, but like just for fun. We didn't bring you into the studio for nothing, Emily. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, well, 
Well, she she did the research. She didn't give us a topic. Speaking of rivers, speaking, of- I wonder, like, is Missouri, like Missouri, and then they named the Missouri River, or did they have the Missouri River and like let's call this place Miz- pretty sure Missouri? They, pretty sure they named the river after the state. So why did they like where where do some of these names come from? Because Arizona in a language, it's not like Spanish exactly. I think it's like um like an ancestral language to um like in Mexican culture before Spanish was the language. I think Arizona means like silver bearing. Oh. Even though it's like there's a lot of copper, but it just like had a lot of precious metals in it. So like Arizona means like silver bearing, you know, but I don't really know where any of these other names come from. Like Mizzou- what does Missouri mean? Misery. I like it here. It's also, also I've Missouri only had like two Missouri. days of being unhappy here in Missouri. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty solid. Uh, we are. But like Mississippi. You're missing your Sippy. We have two people in here sitting on their cell phones texting and not answering questions. Or giving us topics. Yeah. Jesus. What did we bring you Well, maybe we should for? just trash her because she is in here. She had her dog throw up all over her, and her describing that story almost made me throw up. It's true. Her dog eats And I shit. ate a lot of food, so throwing up right now is not ideal. Her dog eats a little bit of shit and just throws up. TV show. No, we don't want this. No, give us a better topic. No, we'll I watched American TV Horror show. Stories the other day. You know, it, you know, nothing to say ladies and gentlemen, it's the spookiest time of year, and I'm not just talking about Australian tax time. Let's 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 talk about let's talk about good Halloween movies. Good Halloween movies for the spookiest time of year. This is going to be an outdated episode by the time I get it. You up. know, what we start the day with. I I don't the know what you Shining, started. The Shining, The Shining. It's a pretty good movie. The Shining, yeah, with uh, Jack. What's his name? Nicholson. Nicholson. Not Jack Nicholas, the golfer, Jack Nicholson, the actor. There's two Simpsons episodes, I think, that make fun of The Shining. There's like a more direct Shining ripoff, and then there's a Halloween of Horror. Or maybe it's the same episode, but they don't call it The Shining. They call it The Shinnin, because mm. it's legally different. Right. And uh, Willie goes out and like saves everybody or something. Well, there is a reason that we watched Ready Player One today. And that was because... What, you were too scared from The Shining? No, no, The Shining is featured in that movie. Is it? I have not, I have, I have not uh, seen the movie or Should. read the book. I do want to read the book, though. I do, too. I, I, heard, I heard the book is different than the movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting into reading lately. I've also been getting into audiobooks. Uh, that's a lot of people nowadays. Well, like, cause I'm just like at work and like, oh, I can yeah. listen to podcasts and like, why the hell would I listen to a podcast? This is the dumbest shit I've ever, except for the people listening to this one, of course. No, but you know, it's, it's just like, dumb. I listen to podcasts. All... I'm going to listen to this podcast at work. Yeah. I just, I go through my podcasts like faster than they're released. Like there's some that I'm still catching up on, yeah, but yeah. it's like, you know, once you're caught up, it's like, oh, I have like a few podcast episodes. I can go through those in a day. Right. So for like, you know. 30 hours a week i'm right now i'm going through brave new world which is like a capitalist dystopia oh, and next i'm gonna read 1984 which is a communist dystopia and see what the similarities and differences are but it is crazy brave new world was written in about the 30s and it is really interesting on how much it predicted like what it like 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 the way that it's so weird i don't really know how to describe it but it's like they kind of predicted like how people are a little bit more promiscuous in today's day and age in like an interesting way uh like how people like are almost worshiping like companies rather than god not saying you have to like worship god but like there's no god they're like oh my ford like they worship henry ford like he's a god but it's just kind of interesting because people are like oh yeah man tesla's life bro you know i don't know but there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff like that in brave new world which is just really interesting like i mean you know i I don't know. I could like probably do more of a deep dive another time, but it's really interesting, like how a lot of it has been predicted. And then same thing with 1984, like you know the constant surveillance is something that's kind of come out. So I'm interested in reading that one too. I love a good dystopia. I love a dystopia novel. Go over to the uh, podcast called Tom and Books or Books and Tom, Books and Tom, Books and Tom, Books and Tom, Books and Tom. 
books of Tom. Tea time. Tea time with Thomas. That's where we talk shit, though. Yeah. We'll have tea time later. And then my podcast that isn't released, I guess, is uh, Existential Terror from Beyond the Void. And that's just when I talk to myself for an hour. (laughs) What's Fog Raw? That's where they, like, force feed ducks way too much grain and make their livers really fat. And then you eat the livers. Livers? I don't know. The duck meat. The duck meat gets really fatty and buttery. Well, I do like duck meat. Oh, I love duck. Have you, oh, I love like eating food that was like cooked in duck. Wait, is foie gras when it's cooked in duck fat? Is that what it means? No, no. What's no. there's no, a thing? Foie being... gras is where they overfeed the ducks to when they're obese. Emily, what's it called when you cook something in duck fat? Can we get that going? So we have our producer looking, looking it up for us. We'll call her a producer. I don't know if she's producing much right now, but. <laughs> Don't look me like She's that. not producing or consuming much. She only had like four wings. What is it called when something is like cooked in duck fat? Cooked in duck fat. You know how like a la Fried? carte means like ice cream or something or a la mode? What? Fried? Confit. Confit is cooked in duck fat. Confetti? Confit. Confetti? Yeah, confit. Confit? It's all that French crap. Confit? I've never been to France. Okay, me neither. No, oh, all right. Just thought I'd put that out I there. I haven't been a lot of places. I've never left the country. Really? Mm-hmm. I hadn't until... I lived in... A, I, was, I lived like, you know... A bit ago. Five hours from Rocky Point. Don't know what that is. It's a place in Mexico. It's very Americanized. It's a... What? I'm sorry, what are you singing? I gotta get more microphones. I mean... We can, but I don't know if these... Well, I have three. I need... I, need... I don't know if these harlots need to be mic'd. <laughs> our, our oh, you harlots. guys can add something. I don't know if it's quality content. I'm going to plug now. them in and then just not record on their microphones. <laughs> just don't even plug them in. And they'll be like, welcome to the Drunk Bitch Podcast. I'm like, listen. <laughs> yeah, okay. Keep talking shit. Wait, can you, what are you playing? Turn what down your phone. What are you playing right now? What is this ghetto ass? We have a goblin bullshit. sitting in the corner just laughing to herself. <laughs> the goblin. The corner goblin. Our producer, the corner goblin. No, Rocky Point in Mexico. Oh. oh, she's playing some Rocky Top. I was confused on why she was so excited when I said Rocky Point. Emily's over here playing that Rocky Top song. Well, guess what, Emily? You have a new nickname, Corner Goblin. Just over there cackling to herself, cackling. slapping her knee. God, she she acts like she's from Arkansas or something. Are you? Oh my God, she took offense to that. That is hilarious. That's I think I've said this already too, but it's crazy. I, so I'm from Arizona, moved to St. Louis. People here are just like, oh yeah, I lived in this like middle of nowhere town and I moved to the big city. Look at all those pretty lights. <laughs> the big city. It's like I lived in a... Like, I lived in, like, one of the largest cities in America, and, like, what people hear things like, damn, bro, this is crazy. We're going to the movies on a Saturday? Shit. The party don't stop, huh? And I'm like, what? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just a different – life moves a lot slower in the Midwest. Is that's? I guess that's what I mean. I heard gunshots last night. I didn't. <laughs> well, you're not here. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. So – I was over here at Brandon's house last night for uh, the the boys' weekend. We may or may not have had a few beverages, and I ended up getting home at about, like, 1 or 2 a.m., and I proceeded to watch Impractical Jokers, like, best of highlights on YouTube until 4.30 a.m., until I just passed out. That's a Midwest thing to do. I woke up at, like, 11.45 to a text from Brandon saying, football? Football? And then I said, yeah, right. Then I came over. (laughs) That's a Midwest. So I hang out with Brandon, go home to sleep just to wake up and come back to Brandon. Yesterday, I was like, hey, bro, we are not apologizing. Hey, Brandon, are we watching football tomorrow? Probably. Probably. Probably, LOL. And I'm like, all right. And then, like, I'm here. And I was like, oh, hey, Brandon. uh, I was thinking we could, you know, watch some football and listen to a podcast. And to be fair, we we had had a few. And Brandon's just like, I don't know, probably. I'm like, (laughs) don't know what I can do with that. So I go home thinking I'm not going to see Brandon for like three weeks. And he just kept me, football? Football? And there was one time I was going out to this bar, 
and uh, I was like, oh, hey, Brandon, are you going to this bar tonight? And he's like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Um, and I was new here, still trying to, like, <laughs> you know, I was already friends with you guys, but I was just trying to, like, I can't just assume I'm in. You know what I mean? I get it. And so I was like, oh, hey, Brandon, you going to that bar? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, um, do you mind if I go? He goes, well, anyone's allowed in. <laughs> and then I'm just over here, like, are we like so can i go but i can't sit with you guys like is that a joke like you get a table i sit at the bar like you know i am so confused so i have to call his girlfriend and ask and even she's like i don't know what the hell that was yeah you're always welcome come on down but just the most well anyone's allowed in i want to know if i can hang out with you dude like i it's like there a hostile some... friendship environment. <laughs> no, I I should have been more specific in that. Uh, you, your ex is one of our friends. Well, no, I know, but it's just and she like, goes to that a lot. So. I know, but just the way you say it. Was I just... know. I should have been like, "Hey, listen, like, yeah, you know, these people hey, might buddy, be you're there. You're always welcome, but you know, so and so might be here, which I would appreciate. I'd be like, you know what? But I, I think just... I can stomach it. But just, but I, I'm just like, well, hey, anyone's allowed. Anybody's in. allowed. <laughs> You know, I, you know, maybe that's your way of saying, like, yeah, come on down, but other people might be there. But it's exactly. just like... That's that's what I... Well, yeah, uh, but it's just like, I'm not, like, thinking, like, oh, yeah, I might find myself in a dicey situation. It's, oh, I might go and my friends not talk to me or something. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, it was a little rough, you know, and then... I'm only apologizing for the way I texted that to you. It's not, not you for said, the way I text, that. because I do text. Whack. I mean, it is funny, but, like, <laughs> I have to, like, go to everybody else. Like, hey, Bren, you want to hang out this weekend? Probably. Well, no, I could be like, hey, Bren, are we hanging out this weekend? And you'd be like, I am free this weekend. And then when I say, hey, Brandon, we, we still good for tomorrow? I never committed to anything. Well, yeah, if I, if I don't commit, then. Yeah, we, we were saying, like, someone could be like, ah, oh, Bren, I was thinking about going to the zoo. And he's like, I have been dying to see those penguins. I, I think they open at 11 the on zoo Saturday. The opens at 11. Yeah, and then 11 a.m. Saturday. Hey, buddy, let's go. Well, I didn't say I was going. I was just I said they were open. I commit to going. I just told you the facts <laughs> when they're open. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you this fucking guy. Well, listen. This is probably the last time I'm going to be on this podcast. But well, yeah, you're a special guest. I don't I, know. I don't know how many more times I'm going to be a special guest on this podcast. You're a, you're a one and done kind of guy yeah, around here. Yeah, usually. Usually. I'm only here. I'm here for a, a short time. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. You know, in a sense, we're all here for a good time, not a long time. Isn't that right, Grumbling in the corner? What is it? What is it? Cop, a goblin, goblin. Corner Goblin. Corner go Goblin in the corner. Cretan. Much much like our corner goblin, you know, everything in life is ephemeral. We have to love what we have while we have it. <laughs> and let every moment carry us into the next. And that includes corner goblins. That includes special guests. And that includes all of you. I agree. Good night, everybody. Thank you for listening. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Capt Cool Kid. That's like Captain but abbreviated. Cool Kid, Capt Cool Kid, and Bad Boy of Botany. Brandon, where can they find you? Brandon underscore Churchill underscore 95 on Instagram. Brandon Churchill on YouTube. Go watch the videos. Watch me review beers, seltzers, etc. Yeah, and uh, we're kind of getting to a point where the... You know, Brandon's YouTube channel kind of complements what we do here on the show. I'm 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 in a few of those videos and I'm hoping to be in a few more going forward. So if you like what we're doing here, go there. A little bit of a different vibe. Oh yeah, different we wild. thing. We it's, wild out there. It's we're wilding out there. It's a lot of fun. So, you know. We'll talk shit here and we'll review there. Yeah. I like that a lot. Right, we'll do a little reviewing here. But. We'll do a little bit of reviewing here for a and then and then uh Good Don't gin. forget, good, good gin. gin. Let's uh, let's give them one shout last shout out. out. Uh, Citadel Gin de France, uh, de France, Jardin de Ete. I don't speak French, but I don't know. It's a very nice, right, beautiful right. bottle. Let me give it a chance. Let me see. Let me Citadel see. Gin uh, de France. Citadel <laughs> Gin de France, Jardin de Ete. Forty-one point five percent alcohol, uh, infused of. Fruits and aromatics. 
if you will. Couldn't have said it better myself. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Give us a five-star rating and review wherever you're listening. Even if you don't like us, give us the five-star review. Agreed. And I think that's it. Brandon, thank you for coming up on the show. We uh, we look forward me. to uh, you know maybe working together again in the future. We'll see how it goes. I might show up again. All right, perfect. Looking forward to it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thanks for grabbing the corner. Thank you, uh, Corner Goblin. Corner Goblin. Goblin. Goblin and uh, thank you. Have a good night. Get home safe. And please drink responsibly.